Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how to create tabs for your web pages using a pure CSS solution. Okay, so no JavaScript is required at all for this to work. Alright, so we can see here I've got the contents of my first tab and also uh, the link to the code here is going to be in the description if you want to download and follow along. But of course I can go into the second and the third tab here and it's all going to work as you might expect. So let's go right into here and begin from scratch to create what we just saw. So going inside the text editor, as we can see, I'm beginning on a blank HTML file. So first, I'm going to be showing you the HTML that is required to achieve this. So going down inside the body, we're going to need a main div to wrap everything inside of. So I can make a new div right here with a class of tabs. Inside here, this is where all of our, um, all of our elements are going to be stored. So for every single tab item we just saw, we're going to need a total of three HTML tags or elements, okay? So the first one is going to be an input field and that input field is going to be a radio button. Alright, so right here, I'm going to say input, I'm going to give this input a type of radio, I'm going to give this a class here of tabs underscore underscore radio, okay? Also very important, let's give this a name. Now this name right here needs to describe the group of whatever your tabbed content is about. So for example, um, you know, we can just say something like, yeah, let's just, let's actually call it tabs dash example. You can of course name this whatever you like and make it relevant to whatever you're trying to tab apart. All right. Now for the, uh, for the ID of this radio, this needs to be unique to your tab content. So for example, if this right here is the first tab, we can just call this tab one. Uh, just keep in mind that you want to try and make this as you know specific and detailed as possible. So once again, try and keep this ID descriptive to whatever your tab contents contains. All right. So um, with the first input field or with the with the first tab, it's also going to be the one that is uh, you know um, it's going to be the one that gets displayed by default. Okay, so in that case, let's make the first one here checked. And when we add, when we add more of these input fields later on, uh, you know, it won't have the checked, uh, you know, attribute. Okay, cool. So when it comes to the actual label or the top section where you actually click on, so uh, referring to these, uh, this top three right here, for these, for these top three labels, this is going to be described using an HTML label element. Okay, so we can make a new label here with a class of tabs underscore underscore label. Okay, now inside this for attribute, this needs to line up with the ID of your tab. So in this case right here, I'm going to say tab one. So these right here, this for and this ID need to match up. So basically, we're going to see how this works very shortly. But when I click on this label, it is going to trigger this radio button. And this right here, this, this mechanism is crucial to our solution. Now, inside the label, let's call this tab number one. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to save this and go inside the browser. And we get something like this. So as we can see, by default, we have a checked status on um, on the actual you know radio button. But just to demonstrate, I'm going to go back inside here and remove this checked attribute. Okay, um, go back in the browser, and we can see that. Of course, if I click on the label, it is going to, you know, uh, trigger or, um, you know, change that button or the radio button to be the selected or checked state. Okay, now, let's go back inside here and add one more element. And this one here is going to be for the content of your tab. So, uh, let's make a new div here with a class of tabs underscore underscore content. Inside here, we can just say uh, content for tab number one. So, Saving this and going back in the browser, we get something like this. So uh, we are almost done with the HTML structure for um, you know our solution. But to demonstrate here, I'm going to copy and paste all of those three elements and make a second tab. So this one here, we're going to change this ID to be tab number two. So I'm going to change the four right here, this four and this ID to be tab two. Of course, changing the content to match up so we can see visually. Now, keep in mind that your name here does not change. So this name needs to be the same for all of your uh, all of your tabs. 
this is going to group together your radio buttons that way we're going to see right now if I click on one it is going to then uncheck the other one so this right here is also crucial for our solution if our names were different for example let's make this tabs dash coffee okay save this and go back we can see we can select both at once so this is not good uh, we need to make those names the same that way it's going to be one or the other okay so this right here is the HTML we need for our solution but I just want to go back inside here and make this one checked by default that way of course our first content is going to be available um, and this one here is going to be hidden when first viewing the page moving on to the CSS for our solution I just want to explain how it's going to work before we get into the actual code so going back inside the browser uh, like I demonstrated earlier we have this um, this radio button mechanism okay so the way it's going to work is basically whenever your radio button is checked for a particular tab that right there so that checked radio button whatever content that follows it that is the content which is going to be uh, displayed to the user using CSS so by default um, all the other content is going to be hidden but we're going to use CSS to basically detect your um, your checked state of your radio uh, button and if it's checked then we're going to display the content following it so let's do this using CSS but first I just want to make it look a bit nicer so going inside the CSS right here opening up a new style tag the first thing to do here is just going to be to expand or have some space around the body this is just so we can see it a bit clearer so I'll say margin 50 px so now I've got a lot more room to work with around the edges so going back inside here let's target our main tabs container so for this one we're going to be displaying this as a flex so this right here is going to allow us to place our tab labels on the top and the content on the bottom. This is also going to, uh, you know, require us to say uh, flex dash wrap. We're going to make this wrap. So I'm going to be showing you what this does a bit later on uh, when we get to it. But for now, let's make this flex wrap and then wrap. I'm going to give this a max width of four of uh, 400 px and just a font family of sans serif. So all of this stuff right here is pretty self-explanatory, especially the bottom two properties. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm going to be showing this flex wrap stuff very shortly. Um, so going down here now, we can target the next class is going to be tabs underscore underscore label. So for the label class, um, for this one here, we're going to be saying padding, we're going to make this 10px top and bottom and then 16px uh, left and right, as well as a cursor of pointer. So going in the browser, we can just see what this looks like. So as we can see, um, a bit of changes here, in particular, uh, using the flex box on the main container, that has caused our content to essentially flow to the right here. We can see also we have this padding around our labels. So of course, we're sort of getting there in terms of our labels. Um, also keep in mind that yeah, the actual radio buttons here are gonna be hidden and we're gonna be doing that right now. So going back in the CSS, let's target the class of tabs underscore underscore radio. Give this a display of none. Okay, so that's gonna hide your actual input fields with the radio. Okay, now they are hidden, of course, but remember, we can actually use our, uh, we can use our labels here to trigger them on and off in the background. So it's hidden, but it's still working. Okay, so now moving on to the main component, and that right there is going to be the actual content right here. So back in the CSS, let's target the tabs underscore underscore content. Now, the most important property here of the content is going to be the order property. So we're going to say order and make this one. What this does is if I just save this here and go back, we can see now we have the both these labels grouped together and the content is separate. OK, so what the order property is doing is basically saying that, you know, since both our tabs have an order of one, it's going to group them together. OK, these labels don't have an order property right up here. Therefore, they're going to stay up top, but the ordered stuff is going to be grouped together. And that is why we got this separation. And that is also crucial to our CSS only solution. We can see here, however, the content is appearing on the right side. This, of course, needs to be down below. So let's fix that right now by applying a width. 
So we're going to say width right here and just make this 100% just like this. Now saving it right here is going to give us this. So we are almost there. Sorry guys, I forgot to mention in the actual recording uh, what the flex wrap property does. So we can see here we got the final solution. So uh, without the flex wrap uh, property checked here, we can see the content is going to appear on the right side in line with the actual tabs. But if you enable flex wrap, it's going to wrap around and put it on the bottom where it belongs. So there you go. We need to now simply do a bit of toggling. Okay, so going back inside here, we're going to uh, we're going to apply some uh, just some really basic border. So we're going to say border dash bottom, make this 3px solid, and then just a, sorry, just a light gray. Um, following this, we can just say line height, make this 1.5, make it look a bit better, as well as a font size of 0.9 am. Of course, these bottom three here are purely optional. Now, by default, remember, our tabs are going to be hidden. So let's say display and make this hidden. So my mistake, display and make this none. Okay, so this right here, if I go back in the browser, they are now invisible or hiding. Okay, now how do we make these appear? Like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be using our radio buttons. So going back inside here, I just want to visibly show the radio buttons for demonstration purposes. So let's put those back, of course, giving us this. So right down here in the CSS, we're going to begin with the radio button. We're going to say tabs underscore underscore radio, then say colon checked. So basically, whenever a radio button is checked, we're then going to say plus. So what this plus does, it's, it's going to select the adjacent sibling or the next sibling. Okay, so if I now say tabs underscore underscore label, this right here is just saying, get me my checked radio button. For example, the first one right here, then get me the next tabs label, this one right here. So now we can customize the look of our label on a selected tab. So we're going to say font weight, make this bold, change the color to be 009578 and make the border bottom something like 2px solid and then 009578, the same color as of course um, the color right up here. So now going back in the browser, as we can see, we've got this styling applied to only the checked radio button. If I check this one, we get this result right here. So this right here is the core of this solution. Okay, so let's extend this a lot further. Let's go back inside here and we're going to say tabs radio, colon checked, plus tabs label once again. Then we're going to chain onto that. We're going to say plus, then tabs underscore underscore content. So now we're getting our tabbed radio that is checked getting that next label, then getting that next content. So this right here, the ordering of our elements is crucial for this to work. So now inside here, we can say display and make this initial. You can also use block if you prefer, it's up to you, but I like to use initial, that way the actual element retains its, uh, retains its original, um, you know, uh, display type. So display initial right there or block if you prefer, but I'm going to save this right here. So now basically on a checked label, it's going to go back to its default display of visible. Back inside here, see right now we get this checked or this tabbed solution working perfectly fine. Okay, so really we are done. Okay, so you can go in more detail. You can make this look a lot nicer. You can add paragraphs, but the solution right here is complete. So going back inside here, once again, just putting the display none back to normal and we have our clean, uh, pure CSS tab. So there you go, guys. Remember the code is in the description below if you want to download it. And of course, you know, review that. So there we go. If you liked today's video, drop a like and subscribe to Decode. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you in the next video.